Good morning chaps, this is the second in a series of late uploaded videos due to the fact that I went out on the mucky beer over the weekend and uh, it's made me a little bit worse for wear. So I apologise for these videos going up late, hopefully tomorrow or aka Monday we will resume normal service but in the meantime I'm going to play some spare footage that I had over the, from the past couple of weeks uh, and I'm going to overdub that with a Q&A session so it's not going to be too long grab a beer or a coffee and settle in to a little bit of sparky sparky questiony questiony right, the first one that we've got is from Trevor Christie he says is there a solution available for the hard water deposits this would have been on the video that went up yesterday I think day before where I just cleaned out the glass washer you can get uh, demineralizers and what have you for glass washers, the hard water deposits or the lime scale in the glass washer at the brew shed came with the glass washer. It's not actually getting any worse, it's getting better, but every now and then the deposits are loosened from one of the isolated and contained tanks that we can't get inside of. So although we've cleaned it with caustic solutions and descaler and everything, there's probably still a little bit in there on the walls and every now and then it loosens up and get stuck in get stuck in the jets Andrew Lynch would be interested to see the cost to DIY compared to buying it complete now he's talking about building of the kit well this is about a three and a half barrel kit that we're building at the minute and I think I'm about let's say three thousand pound in including uh, license applications steel fittings uh, all that kind of stuff and you just have a look on the internet there's a couple of people selling breweries yeah there are a couple of uh, companies online that will sell you a brewery uh, PCB installations is one of them I thought I'm just on the internet looking for it now and these guys will come out and fit uh, or manufacture a brewery for you I've heard good and bad reviews about them in particular I don't think that I'd be too keen on uh, on buying one of these looks quite expensive but if you jump onto the website uh, it'll give you an idea of what what you're gonna have to pay for it so if there's a two and a half barrel brewery on there um, they're looking at eleven thousand pound plus VAT for a two and a half barrel that's 400 litres Mine 600 litre to the brim, which is a four barrel. They've got that down on there, 17,000 pounds. So you can see there's a significant saving to be made if you've got the balls to knock it up yourself. We shall see if mine works or not. I don't know. <laughs> right, pitch perfect. Can we invest? Are Bruce Shed Limited stocks available for the public? I think he's pulling my plonker here, but no, they're not. Les Patterson asks, uh, I like your vlogs, mate. Could you give us more without fast-forwarding? He's referring to the time-lapses that I use in the videos. Well, I kind of like the time-lapses, and uh, it allows me to fit in, let's say, 40 minutes worth of work, show you the process, and compact it into 35 seconds. If I just let that play at normal speed, then the videos would be excruciatingly boring to watch. And quite frankly, you know, I'm working. I haven't got time to do too many pieces to the camera. And I haven't got that much to say, honestly. So if I didn't include them, you'd be looking at a three or four minute upload or a 40 to 50 minute upload of just me walking back and forth using grinders, cutting steel. So I'm compacting it so it's not boring for everybody. Uh, I'm sure that most people appreciate that. Charlie Essex. Why are the eggs so round up north? I don't know, we're a bit tighter up north, aren't we? You'd have thought it would have been a bit different uh, different shape squeezing them out. I have no idea, buddy. Uh, Paul is here brewing. Good idea wanting to keep the business to just the family. Maybe you could set up a patron account and people could donate with no obligation. Just an idea. Quite a few on YouTube do it. Yeah, I've had a lot of people recommend this to me. Scrolling down the comments over the past two or three weeks, I've had several people suggest we open up a patron account. It's something I'll look into. Um, the YouTube AdSense doesn't pay much. The last payment we got from uh, YouTube advertising paid for the 
grinders that we did and uh, of course that's helping with the build uh, in a roundabout sort of way so I, I'll, I'll consider it I think we'll look into that in the future I mean at the minute we've got the merch I only make a couple of quid on a t-shirt um, it's just like buying me a pint really uh, so it doesn't go very far in terms of helping the brewery build so something like uh, yeah a weekly Patreon donation might be might be something worth looking into. Trevor Christie, again, I think, yes. Uh, I would have thought the surface area of the cooling jackets would be larger. How do you determine the contact area needed for your tanks? Uh, basically, <laughs> it was how much cooling jacket I could get out of one sheet of stainless steel. So I cut the stainless up to get, uh, what was it, three for something like that cooling jackets and that's how I ended up with it I do know that once you've got the glycol running in it one of the biggest differences is the offset of temperature so let's say we have our glycol tank sitting at minus 20 degrees or minus 18 I think I used to have the last one and once it's insulated and set up it'll sit there quite comfortably so when you've got something that's minus 18 running past a fermenter that's at 17 degrees you don't need much surface area to cool it down. I think if you didn't have that temperature differential, then you'd have to look at the surface area uh, to cooling ratio. But uh, we had 2,000 litres in a tank, and I could get it down to freezing. In fact, once or twice we had frozen an FV up um, at IVB. So these cooling jackets are actually a little bit bigger in comparison to the amount of volume, so they shouldn't have any problem operating at all. Uh, the Roberick, time to go homo, crumbs, I think that's off a video where I said it's time to go home, but I'm not knocking it, whatever floats your boat buddy. Steve Molson, wow, them tanks and FVs look spot on, all stood next to each other, are you going to name the fermenters with some names, even the family, onwards and upwards, cheers, I might do, I might name the FVs, I might name the tanks, I, I probably will at some point, you know, uh, it makes it a bit more entertaining in the videos in the future when they've all got names we shall see Oliver Harold why are your tanks so small aren't you trying to sell beer well so you 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 try and drink 600 litres of uh, of beer mate I don't think we're small we get through uh, about 14 casks it's between 7 and 14 casks a week in the brew shed depending on uh, how busy we are and we can make 12 casks in one of those fermenters, so we've got one a week there to keep us going. We don't, I don't want to be sat on beer, and I'm not getting into the cask market. So we're not doing beer swaps, we're not selling to any other pubs. It's going to be just for us, and if I do sell to any other pubs, it ain't going to be for 65 quid a cask, I tell you now. It's going to be triple figures. Garant Jones, I've met him before. Uh, looking good. What made you decide to go with four legs on the mash tun instead of three? Like two at the front and one at the back. Well, we're going to be a 200 pound gorilla on the side of the mash tun, isn't there? Mixing all the grain and everything, so I don't want it tipping over. Whereas nobody's really going to be swinging off the side of the fermenters, so I think they'll be safe. Tom Williams. I'm a Tom. You're a Harry. All we need is a dick. Where is the handler? Well, you see... Dick Handler is like Superman to me being Clark Kent. You never see us together in the same room. Uh, I always have difficulty pronouncing this name. Sh Shunus. C-H-S-C-H-N-U-S. Shunus, I think. Nice vid. Good to know which grinder was preferable from each outlet. But what about an overall order of preference? Which would come first and which would be last? Or are you leaving that till each one has had a good test? You've answered your own question, buddy. Yeah. I can't really give you a, a good idea on what's best unless I've used it for a couple of weeks. I'm already beginning to have a preference to the red one. I can't remember what name it was. But the red one's like a nice, powerful grinder, easy to operate. So we'll revisit that in the future. Neil M. Will you offer shares as a limited company? For no, go fuck a hat. Red Dog Brewer. Thoroughly well deserved. 
all being well, you'll see me in a couple of months with Tony Howard. Cheers, pal. Yes, so just before we wrap this up, we do have a, a couple of the uh, brew tubers coming up in July, I think, uh, to just have a few beers in the brewery. Um, there's not much else I can offer you, really, apart from just come up and have a look around and we'll, we'll all go out for a drink. Uh, but if you want to join in, either get in touch with Red Dog or get in touch with uh, Tony Howard on YouTube and uh, they'll point you in the right direction. I think they're just going to come up and stop in a and b or something locally for the night. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's pretty much an open invite. So jump on board, folks, jump on board. And then finally, Mr Vinyl Ninja is Chance a Border Collie. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.